Hi, fifth graders. Um, this is Trendell here um, to do our next SCASA lesson. Um, so at the beginning of our last lesson, uh, we talked about managing mistakes. Okay, everybody makes mistakes in life, even adults. Okay, so things don't always go the way we expect them to. And so how we handle our disappointment um, affects our feelings and our actions. Okay, what we do with that disappointment um, and how we react. So one way we can manage our mistakes um, is to use positive self-talk. So positive self-talk helps, helps you find the brighter side of a situation um, or a way to do better the next time. Um, and we also talked about avoiding mistakes like misusing prescription or over-the-counter medicine. Okay, we learned how to prevent the misuse of medicine so you can stay safe. Okay, so for our next GAZA lesson, lesson six, um, we're going to be talking about peer pressure um, and um, going over different peer pressure refusal strategies. So let's first talk about who is your peer, okay? So a peer is someone your own age. So a peer um, of yours could be a classmate, uh, someone who lives in your neighborhood, or a friend. Um, are your teachers or parents your peers? No, that's right. Adults in your life are not your peers. So what is peer pressure? So peer pressure is, is um, when someone your age tries to get you to do something you don't want to do um, or something you know you shouldn't do, okay? That person is using negative peer pressure or, um, and, and, trying, and they are trying to persuade you, okay? So for example, um, a fifth grader might pressure um, or get pressured to cheat on a test. Um, they might get pressured to bully or pick on another student um, or maybe to tell a lie. So do you think it's possible to influence um, our peers or our friends in a positive way? Yeah, that's it's right, or you're right. Um, when you encourage a peer to make a responsible decision or to do something healthy, that is uh, called positive peer pressure, um, and you're being a positive peer influence. So most of the time, a good friend will support and encourage you to make good decisions but you should be ready if someone turns up the negative pressure. Okay, so there are many strategies you can use to refuse negative peer pressure. So what is a strategy? A strategy is a plan, that's right. It's an action plan. So I have listed below nine peer pressure refusal strategies um, that you can use to manage a peer pressure situation. Okay, and we're gonna go over each one. Uh, the first one is steer clear, say no, walk away, ignore, broken record, make an excuse, reverse the pressure, state the facts, and better idea. So we'll get into these um, on the next slides in more detail. So the first refusal strategy is called steer clear. Okay. This strategy helps you avoid a peer pressure situation before it even starts. So if you see a group of kids that are known for causing uh, trouble hanging out on the basketball court during recess, do you think it's a good idea to hang out with them? No, probably not, right? So instead, you're gonna steer clear of those kids and find someone else to spend time with. Okay, steer clear can be used when you know pressure is likely to happen. Okay, so um, this situation um, is, is to help you avoid, uh, or this strategy is to help you avoid situations. The rest of the strategies will help you if you all are already in a peer pressure situation. So if you are approached um, um, by a peer, peer pressure situation. Okay, so the next strategy is, is to say no. Okay, there are several ways that you can say uh, no, like no thanks, no way, um, not interested, right? Just say no. Now, think about our, when we talked about our communication styles, um, and remember we talked about um, assertive communication, okay? 
um, we want to make sure that you're using assertive communication when you refuse the peer pressure. So when you say no, you want uh, to be confident, all right? You want to stand tall. You want to look them in the eye and speak up to show your confidence. So you can also walk away. Okay, this is the next uh, peer pressure refusal strategy, just to walk away. So think of a safe place to go and start walking there um, immediately when you're in the situation. So don't hang around, leave the situation quickly. Okay, so it, say you were pressured um, to do something and you were out in the hallway at school. Um, a safe place that you could go um, would be maybe your teacher's classroom. Um, if your teacher was in there or maybe the office, okay? Somewhere uh, with lots of people. So you know that it's a safe place. Okay, so ignore. What does it mean to ignore? Well, ignore, it means to refuse to pay attention to someone. Okay, so if a person starts pressuring you, um, act as if that person that's pressuring you isn't even there. Don't look at them, don't pay attention, um, and hopefully they'll get the picture um, and get the point and they will leave you alone. Okay, the next strategy is called broken record. Okay, to use the broken record strategy, um, you need to just repeat the same thing over and over, um, like a, a broken record. Okay, so for example, if someone pressuring you, um, or is pressuring you to lie, you could say, I don't lie. The person starts calling you names, you can keep saying, I don't lie. Um, if the person says, everyone does it, what would you say? I don't lie, right? So if you say it enough, the person pressuring you will know you are serious and hopefully give up. Okay, so the next one is make an excuse. To make an excuse, think of a real reason not to go along with your friends. Okay, you don't have to lie. Instead, just come up with a believable excuse. Uh, so for example, maybe I can't. My mom told me I had to clean my room today. Or um, I have to go straight home because my mom is waiting for me. Um, so in this situation, just think of a realistic excuse, okay? And, um, and try to get yourself out of the situation. Okay, so next stra strategy is called reverse the pressure. So reverse the pressure means to put the pressure back on the person who is pressuring you. You could say, why are you pressuring me? Or you could say, if you were my friend, you wouldn't pressure me to do something I don't want to do. So this strategy uh, works because it puts the pressure back on the person pressuring you. Okay, so the next two strategies provide you with an opportunity to refuse peer pressure, but at the same time, they encourage your peers to make healthy choices or healthy decisions. So you can encourage the other person to do something positive rather than something negative. Okay, so try to um, reverse um, the negative into a positive. Okay, so the first one is called state the facts. So to state the facts, you're gonna tell the person pressuring you the possible negative consequences of doing what he or she wants to do. So for example, if the person was pressuring you to steal, you could say, stealing is wrong. You could get in big trouble. Um, if someone was pre uh, pressuring you to cheat on a test, you could say, if we get caught cheating, we'll get zeros on the test. If we get caught, the teacher will no longer trust us. If I get caught cheating, my parents will ground me. Okay, so those are some possible facts of negative consequences. Um, if someone is pressuring you to try to um, vape, you could tell them, I, I don't want to um, harm my heart or increase my blood pressure. And I don't want to uh, my brain to be, or my brain functionings uh, to be affected. Okay, the last strategy is called a better idea. Okay, so a better idea suggests something um, else to do. So this strategy works best if the person pressuring you is a friend um, and you don't wanna lose the friendship. You could say, 
Um, I have a better idea. Let's go to the park and play basketball. Um, you could suggest anything positive, like playing video games, uh, finishing homework, or riding bikes. Okay, the possibilities are endless. Think of something that is safe, something that's healthy, and something that's fun, okay, so that you and your friend could do instead. So um, by giving everyone a better idea, you can help your friends make better decisions. You can um, help to stay healthy and to keep out of trouble. Okay, so now that we've learned um, our nine peer pressure refusal strategies, I'd like to play a game called Spacewalk. Okay, and in this game, um, we're going to practice these strategies. Okay, so you, what, what I want you to do, um, I'm going to read a scenario, and I want you to um, think of the peer pressure uh, refusal strategy that I have listed here on the slide um, and, and try to match them to the best um, um, strategy. Okay, so you're matching the scenario to the best strategy. So the strategies are listed below, steer clear, make an excuse, say no, reverse the pressure, walk away, state the facts, ignore, better idea, or broken record. Okay, so the first one, let's see. The scenario is um, uh, this, okay. So Jill suggested that Monica buy a t-shirt uh, that she knew her mom would disapprove of. Monica said, I can't, I have to save my money for my mom's birthday. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to think which of these refusal strategy uh, strategies would match this scenario. If you said make an excuse, good job. Okay, next scenario. Megan said to Beth, if you don't tell Jake that you like him, I will. Beth replied, if you were my friend, you wouldn't pressure me to do something I don't want to do. Okay, so think about it. She put the pressure back on her friend. Okay, so this is called reverse the pressure. Good job. Okay, next, on his way to the park, Jason could see some kids spray painting graffiti on a fence by the swings. Jason decided not to go to the park. Okay, so remember when you avoid the situation, you use um, the strategy steer clear. Good job. Um, how about this one? Amy tried to get Jasmine to lie to their teacher about being sick so they'd be excused from gym class. Jasmine looked away and pretended she didn't even hear Amy. Okay, so um, Jasmine was ignoring. She used the a strategy of ignoring. Good job. Um, next, Seth told Paige to let him cheat off her test. Paige replied, if we get caught, we will both get zeros. Okay, so Paige was using, um, the, uh, stating the consequences, right? So she was stating the facts. Good job. Um, how about this one? Abby tried to get Joe to skip school. Joe said, I don't want to. Come on, said Abby. I don't want to, said Joe. Please, said Abby. I don't want to, said Joe. Okay, so think about what Joe did here. And if you said broken record, good job. Remember, he said, kept saying, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, like a broken record. Good. Okay, next one. Sarah begged Brooke to use her older sister's makeup. Brooke knew she wasn't allowed to. Brooke said, I have a better idea. Let's watch a movie instead. Okay, so what did she do? She used the strategy, better idea, good job. Okay, second to last. Julie told Kay to steal a purse. Kay said, no way, I am not a thief. Um, when she said, no, no way, I am not a thief, she was assertive, she, was, uh, she stood tall, she looked uh, her friend in the eye, she used a confident voice, so this strategy was say no, good job. 
And last one. At lunch, Ryan told Alex to throw some macaroni at Jay. Ryan insisted. Come on, no one likes him anyway. Alex got up and walked away from Ryan. Okay, so what do you think? If you said walk away, good job. All right, good job with those. All right, so good job with the game. Um, so sometimes we make choices on our own um, and sometimes our decision decision making is influenced by our peers. So sometimes peer pressure can be positive, but at other times peer pressure can lead to trouble. So I want you to continue to practice these refusal strategies so you are prepared to make good choices. Um, and you are prepared if you are in a situation, um, you will have an action plan and, um, and try to get yourself um, to make the best decision you can. So in our next lesson, um, we're gonna discuss the effects of alcohol and we're gonna keep, continue to apply these peer pressure refusal strategies um, in situations involving alcohol. Okay, so until our next lesson, um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. Um, the email again is scazaprevention at gmail.com. Thanks, talk to you next time.